Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President-elect Donald Trump's expected to name ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson as secretary of state. The selection prompted outrage and condemnation among environmental groups. Exposés by Inside Climate News and The Los Angeles Times have revealed Exxon knew that fossil fuels caused global warming as early as the 70s, but hid that information from the public and instead poured millions of dollars into PR efforts aimed at sowing doubt over the science of climate change. Responding to the possible nomination, 350.org executive director May Bouvi said, quote, ExxonMobil is still a leading funder of climate denial and is pursuing a business plan that will destroy our future. Tillerson deserves a federal investigation, not federal office, she said. Tillerson has spent the past 41 years at Exxon, where he became chair and chief executive more than a decade ago. He has no experience in government service nor in the diplomatic corps, Donald Trump praised Tillerson during an appearance on Fox News Sunday. He's much more than a business executive. I mean, he's a world-class player. He's in charge of, I guess, the largest company in the world. He's in charge of a, an oil company that's pretty much double the size of his next nearest competitor. It's been a company that's been unbelievably managed. and. To me, a great advantage is he knows many of the players, and he knows them well. He does massive deals in Russia. He does massive deals for the company, not for himself, for the company. Tillerson is known to have close ties to Russian President Vladimir Putin, who awarded him the country's Order of Friendship decoration in 2013. Both Senate Democrats and Republicans have expressed concern over the potential nomination. This is Arizona Republican Senator John McCain speaking on CBS's Face the Nation. It's a matter of concern to me that he has such a close personal relationship with Vladimir Putin, and obviously they've done enormous deals together, that that would color his approach to Vladimir Putin and the Russian threat. News of Tillerson's potential selection came one day after President Obama ordered a review of Russia's role in influencing the presidential election. The CIA has reportedly concluded Russia intervened in the election to help Trump win. This is incoming Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York. For years, foreign adversaries have directed cyber attacks at America's physical, economic and military infrastructure while stealing our intellectual property. Now, our democratic institutions have been targeted. Recent reports of Russian interference in our election should alarm every American. Donald Trump rejected allegations that Russia aided his Electoral College victory as ridiculous. In a statement, the Trump transition team said, quote, these are the same people that said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Meanwhile, Donald Trump was questioned by Chris Wallace of Fox News Sunday over his plans to skip daily presidential intelligence briefings. I just want to ask you about your skepticism about the intelligence community. You are getting the presidential daily brief yes. only once a week. Well, I, I get it when I need it. But is, it, is there no, some no, skepticism? I get it when I, first of all, these are very good people that are giving me the briefings. And I say, if something should change from this point, immediately call me. I'm available on one minute's notice. I don't have to be told, you know, I'm like a smart person. I don't have to be told the same thing and the same words every single day for the next eight years. During his interview on Fox News Sunday, Trump also promised he would quickly decide the fate of the Dakota Access and Keystone XL pipelines once taking office. He said he's studying the Paris Climate Agreement to see if it would give China or other countries an advantage over the U.S. Trump's comments came just days after the Trump transition team sent a memo to employees of the Department of Energy questioning their work on climate change. The 74-page questionnaire requests, among other things, information on which employees attended U.N. climate talks and demands justification for a program tracking the nation's carbon dioxide pollution.
Recep Erdogan convened an emergency security meeting and vowed to crush Kurdish militants. What we must focus on is this terror burden. Our people should have no doubt we will continue our battle against terror until the end. If they plan to intimidate us with these attacks, we have not degraded ourselves to leave the arena to these cowards. A report by Amnesty International last week estimated a half million people have been forced from their homes in southeastern Turkey amidst a brutal government crackdown in majority Kurdish regions. In Egypt, a bomb exploded during Sunday mass in Cairo's main Coptic Christian cathedral, killing 25 people and wounding nearly 50 others. The blast tore apart pews and seared pillars, leaving at least six children among the dead. There's been no claim of responsibility. It was the worst violence against Egypt's minority Christian population since a series of attacks in 2011. Meanwhile, in Somalia, a suicide truck bomb exploded at Somalia's biggest port Sunday, killing at least 29 people. Militants from the group al-Shabaab have claimed responsibility. France's socialist government will ask parliament to extend a state of emergency, granting officials sweeping powers of search, seizure and detention. If approved, it would be the fifth such renewal of emergency rules since terrorist attacks in November of 2015 that killed 130 people. The French prime minister said the extension was needed at least through presidential and general elections next spring. Each of us should bear in mind the reality of the context that we're living in, a particularly high level of terrorist threat. France's emergency rule curtails freedom of assembly and includes measures that permit police raids without a warrant. Human Rights Watch has said the emergency powers undermine human rights and the rule of law. In Alabama Thursday night, a condemned prisoner heaved and coughed for nearly 15 minutes after prison officials injected him with the first of three drugs meant to stop his heart. Witnesses to the execution said Ronald Burt Smith moved his lips, clenched a fist, opened one eye after prison officials administered him the sedative midazolam, a drug that has been linked to other botched executions. The execution came after the U.S. Supreme Court declined to intervene in Smith's death penalty case in a four-to-four -four tie vote. Smith was placed on death row in 1994 after a judge overruled a jury's decision to sentence him to life in prison. Alabama is the only U.S. state to allow that practice. In Denver, Colorado, Mayor Michael Hancock says he will no longer order police to seize winter survival gear, including tents and sleeping bags from the city's homeless residents. The move came after videos of officers snatching blankets from homeless men and women went viral. Advocates for the homeless say the practice threatened the lives of people at risk of freezing to death. The U.S. Senate has approved a bill granting $170 million to Flint, Michigan, to help replace pipes that are leaching toxic lead into Flint's drinking water. Flint's lead poisoning crisis began last year when an unelected emergency manager appointed by Michigan Governor Rick Snyder switched the source of the city's drinking water to the corrosive Flint River. Today, the water in Flint is still poisoned and unsafe to drink. Meanwhile, environmentalists are warning of a provision of the bill which rolls back protections to California's Bay Delta estuary. Environmentalists say the changes threaten delicate ecosystems and undermine the Endangered Species Act. In Philadelphia, hundreds of people gathered Friday for a march in protest to demand life-saving medication for imprisoned journalists and former Black Panther Mumia Abu-Jamal and for all Pennsylvania prisoners suffering from the unconstitutional denial of treatment for their hepatitis C. The protest marked 35 years since December 9, 1981, when Mumia Abu-Jamal was shot by Philadelphia police, arrested and then charged with the murder of white police officer Daniel Faulkner. Abu-Jamal has always maintained his innocence, Amnesty International has found he was deprived a fair trial. Mumia Abu-Jamal has spent the majority of his time in prison on death row. This is Baltimore Reverend C.D. Witherspoon. We understand that when they took him off of death row, what the strategy was was for him to die sick behind bars. But we're not going to allow for our brother to die behind bars, because we were in, in captivation, he fought for our liberation. Yes. And so, brothers and sisters, we got to fight for him to be liberated. We got to be fight for him to receive dignity and respect. What kind of nation would have our brother be in prison?
That's Baltimore Reverend C.D. Witherspoon. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos Saturday accepted the Nobel Peace Prize for his role in crafting a peace deal with FARC rebels, ending a half-century of civil war that left a quarter million people dead. At a ceremony in Oslo, Norway, President Santos hailed the Nobel Prize as a gift from heaven and dedicated it to all Colombians affected by the fighting. In his wide-ranging acceptance speech, Santos also said nations, including the U.S. and Colombia, need to rethink the war on drugs. It makes no sense to imprison the peasant who grows marijuana. When nowadays, for example, its cultivation and use are legal in eight states of the United States. The manner in which this war against drugs is being waged is equally or perhaps even more harmful than all the wars the world is fighting today combined. It's time to change our strategy. And the Nobel Committee presented prizes for medicine, economics, physics, chemistry and literature in a gala ceremony in Stockholm, Sweden. Notably absent was Bob Dylan, winner of this year's Nobel Prize for Literature. Accepting the award on Dylan's behalf was legendary singer, poet and author Patti Smith, who performed A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard rain's gonna fall. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.